now to look at the ribosomes. Um, the ribosomes are about 60% ribosomal RNA and 40% protein. And they have the two subunits, the large subunit and the small. The prokaryotic ribosomes are a lot smaller than eukaryotic ribosomes, and they have fewer proteins, um, but they are still where proteins are made. It's the site of protein synthesis. All cells have ribosomes, and that 70S and 80S, don't know if it really matters to you because I'm not going to go into a huge mathematical explanation, but the S denotes the sediment coefficients, just FYI. Um, you got some internal structures um, also in addition to the nucleoid region and the uh, ribosomes uh, that are not bound by membranes because remember these are prokaryotes. They don't have membranes around anything inside that cell. Uh, the inclusions and the granules are just for storage. And they vary in size and in number and in what they contain. But the bacterial cell uses them if they deplete their environmental resources. And they need to use them. They've got them there. The cytoskeleton, a lot of bacteria have this internal network of protein polymers that contributes to the cell shape. Now, endospores, um, these are dormant resting cells, and they're made by gram-positive bacteria, the Clostridium bacillus and Sporosarcina. Uh, they have two phase life cycle. The vegetative cell is the metabolically active growing cell. The endospore is if environmental conditions become bad, then they will go into this endopore stage of their life cycle so that they can survive long term and resist those bad environmental conditions. So they function in survival. Vegetative cells function in reproduction. Um, and all of the medically relevant ones, again, are usually gram positive. Now, the process of making the endospores is called sporula sporulation. And endospores are the hardiest of all life forms. They can withstand extreme heat, extreme dryness, radiation, chemicals, and freezing temperatures. And once that endospore returns to vegetative growth and becomes a vegetative cell, we call that germination. Again, they are dormant, they are dehydrated, and they are metabolically inactive. They have a very thick coat, and they can last for up to 250 million years. They're almost immortal. They're resistant to ordinary cleaning methods and boiling. Uh, the only thing that destroys them is pressurized steam at 120 degrees Celsius at 15 PSI pressure for 20 to 30 minutes, which is what our autoclave will do to destroy them. So if you discover that the bacterium you're following or studying stores phosphate, which of the following would you expect to contain the stored phosphate? And the answer there is the granules. We didn't have the one that didn't have that there. Sorry. Um, now looking at the shapes and arrangements and sizes of bacterial cells, three basic shapes. If they're spherical, they're coccus. If they're rod-shaped, they're bacillus. Sometimes the bacillus is short, the rod is short and fat, and that's coccobacillus, kind of a combination of coccus and bacillus. It's vibrio if it's curved a little bit, a little curved rod. The spirillum can be helical, shaped like a comma, or a twisted rod. And it's called a spirochette if it's twisted so much that it looks like a spring. So looking at this, you can see the coccus there 
That's the Staphylococcus aureus there. We'll look with the, at that one most likely. The rod or bacillus shape, the Legionella pneumonophilia there on the right. Vibrio, the curved rod, that's Vibrio cholera. You see it's curved. And Aquasporillum, you can see how it's more um, helical or spiral shaped. The Spirochette, see it's more of a corkscrew looking shape. And um, the branching filaments that where it can be arranged, where it's got branches off of it, that's the Streptomyces spe species that you see. And to end this video, we're going to talk about pleomorphism. This is a variation in cell shape and size within a single species. Um, and some species are noted for their pleomorphism. Looking at the picture here, you've got um, different sizes and shapes here in this bacteria. Um, the palisade arrangement, you see how they're right next to each other that you see here. Um, and then the metachromatic granules you can see here. So we got all different shapes and sizes within this, so it's a pleomorphic species.